I'm Tanya Fox, and you're listening to Fox Talks Business Podcast. I started my career in the corporate world, but always played to my own tune and love to think outside of the box. This didn't always serve me well with the bosses, so I made the decision to become an entrepreneur. And that little seed of entrepreneurial curiosity continued to grow as I branched out into retail, service, and franchise businesses. Now, I have been fortunate to have amazing successes in the last two decades, but they did not come without some really big failures and even bigger lessons learned. And that's why I started this podcast, not just to share the failures, but to show you how you can turn every failure into a success. We're going to hear from some amazing humans from around the world that are going to share their stories of the good, the bad, and the motivational entrepreneurial life has to offer. After all, life is too short to make all of the mistakes yourself. So why not learn from each other? And of course, we're going to have some fun because as I always say, well, you know what? I'll tell you that at the end of the episode. Hello, Foxy listeners. Welcome to the show. My guest today is going to be a great conversation. I can already tell. Amanda, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you so much for having me, Tanya. So tell us a little bit about you. What is your story? Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, So I'm an accidental entrepreneur. I never dreamt about owning my business, never intended to own my business. It wasn't even really something on my radar, even through college, um, really. But I have always been creative. Like, um, you know, I was creating and illustrating my own books back in elementary school. Um, Home computers came on the scene and I started playing with all the art programs on there. Um, My high school teacher introduced me to Photoshop and I was hooked. So when it came time for college, I did major in graphic design because I figured, you know, marry the creativity with the tech that I love. I remember doing that. My first computer was like a Tandy 1000. And I remember (laughs) sitting and painstakingly like typing code in to get like Mm -hmm. a ping pong Mm -hmm. game and stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Or dating myself. No, if anybody remembers GeoCities, like the build your own website builder back yeah. in the day, I had so many of those and like, you know, I figured out how to make text blink on the, in HTML and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So I went to college for design, loved it, graduated, made my way down to Austin, intended to get a job in-house somewhere at an agency, whatever. And um, so I was doing the job search thing. And while I was doing that, my boyfriend at this time was a freelance web developer. And he's like, well, why don't you just take on some freelance gigs on the side just to have some income while you're doing this thing? And I was like, huh, I'd like, I never even like considered going out on my own before this. Um, So I did that. I got my first couple of gigs off of Craigslist of all places uh, back in the day. When it wasn't and the way I, it is today. <laughs> yeah, when it wasn't quite so full of the sketch as it is today. Uh, Well, though I'd have some sketch stories from back then too, but um, I ended up liking that so well. And I got a couple like repeat ongoing retainer clients from that. I was like, I'm just going to do this. (laughs) Who needs a full time job? (laughs) Yeah, it's like, I don't have to commute anywhere. I don't have to like get up and be presentable at like nine in the morning. Like I set my own hours. I work on all sorts of stuff. Like I'm just going to do this. Not, in hindsight, the best way to go about it. (laughs) I had uh, zero savings cushion. I had zero business know-how, zero marketing know-how. So it was definitely a learn all the things on the way down (laughs) after you jump off the cliff kind of situation. Um, But that was in 2006. And I have been an independent designer ever since. So that is kind of me in a nutshell for for how I got started at least. (laughs) So when you switched from, you know, kind of doing freelancing to really Mm -hmm. more, you know, when you said like jumping off of that cliff and realizing there is a difference between freelancing and being an entrepreneur, what was that Mm. like for you? Like, was it a moment that you kind of made the switch of, of sort of saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this seriously? Sort of. Um, it, that was not an immediate thing either. I will say I kind of winged it freelancing for, oh God, probably like nine years or so. Like I didn't have a business formation. I didn't, you know, I just kind of was the order taker, um, you know, that kind of stuff. And then um, I got engaged 
and I knew I was going to be changing my name when I got married. And I was like, okay, well, as long as I'm like, like everywhere that I was freelancing was just under my maiden name. So I was like, well, if I'm going to be changing all this anyway. Maybe I should like actually get serious about it. Um, so I actually, you know, formed a business. It's Studio Gracia. It's my new, my new last name, my married name. Um, you know, put on the big girl pants, did the separate bank accounts, did the LLC registration, did all that. And um, it did, it kind of, it had been evolving for a while. So I kind of gotten tired of being, oh, well, like the hired help, I guess, um, right. for lack of a better word, like somebody who just does what they're told, like come in, do the thing, be the pixel monkey, and then you're done. Um, I wanted to be more of the expert. I wanted to be you know, do more of the thinking and the strategy and be valued for that side of things too. So that was kind of a shift I made when I, when I formalized my business as well. So, um, you know, it's always an interesting path for me to, you know, to experience or to hear the stories of people kind of going through, you know, entrepreneurship, because I find like, it's mm -hmm. never the same path, right? You could have two of exactly yeah, the no. same businesses. <laughs> And the path is always different. So for you, is there anything that sort of stands out like either like in a memory or, you know, like even in a story of something that you were like, man, I wish I would have known this or somebody would have told me this information, mm. you know, beforehand. Um, gosh. Yeah, I think I the biggest one, the one that just popped to mind when you said that was um, on the financial and tax side of things. So that first year that I had been fully a freelancer, you know, not a student anymore, not whatever, um, tax time came around and I was like, holy shit, like, <laughs> I owe how much to the IRS? Like, I just had no, no, I didn't know I was supposed to be doing my estimated taxes. I didn't realize that self-employed people got taxed at like 30% or whatever it is. Um and I did not have that in savings either. So uh, pro tip, the IRS allows payment plans if you can't pay all, <laughs> all your tax bill at once. Um, so that was definitely a big like, why didn't I know this? Like, or, yeah, just, I, I wish I had been better prepared for that side of things for sure. Well, and I think that's a common thing that, you know, happens. I, you know, see it a lot in, you know, people that, I work with too that, you know, or don't submit for a couple of years and then go back and they're like, I owe more than what I make Oof. in a year and I've spent it all <laughs> like, right. Yeah. It's that kind of, but yeah, it's all of those things. I always compare it to like women. I remember like being pregnant with my son and people being like, oh, it's the best. And you forget about all the pain. And then after I went through labor, I decided that I was going to be honest. <laughs> and so when everybody's like, what was it like? I'm like, it's a shit show. And it hurts like hell. And you don't forget. They lie. They're liars. You don't forget. And it is a convenient excuse to use later on in life. So don't forget it. <laughs> but it's those things that I think sometimes happen so often, especially in entrepreneurship, is that it everything kind of gets candy coated, right? Where it's like, no, it's really, mm -hmm. really great. But these little tiny tips are the things that are key that could like save somebody or even save yourself next time when you're trying to, you know, do the next thing or something new, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I, uh, especially I feel like right now in, in the online business world, particularly there's all this like, Oh, just, you know, positive vibes and manifest your, your future self. And like, it's like, well, yes, it's all well and good, but there's a logistical th side of things you have to pay attention to too, for like an actual business. So yeah. Well, and I think that's just it, right? Like we hear this a lot in the, in the industry of branding, right? Like it, it mm -hmm. you're just like thrown so many things, like just be yourself. Uh, no, use chat GPT to make everything you say sound better and not sound, sound like oh, you. And then gosh. you're like, but be authentic with it. And you're like, I don't understand. Like, it seems like, you know, so, so confusing. Your brand is yourself, right? That I think people kind of get mm -hmm. lost in all of the, you know, conflicting stuff that is out there because everybody has a voice, everybody has a platform, right? So for you, what are some of the things that you think that people should be paying attention to in their business? Let's talk about like, um, 
I don't know if this would be easier for you, but the majority of our listeners have been in business for a while, but I think a lot of them still Mm -hmm. struggle with like actually knowing, am I branded? Like, I don't really, I don't really know if I can say, oh yeah, no, I have a brand. (laughs) Like, you know, they're like, I use the same colors. I like to say you have a brand, whether you're actively shaping it or not, because brand is really about the perception of your business in the minds of the world, your customers, whatever. Um, So they have a perception of you, whether it's something you're shaping and being intentional about or not. Um, And I think that's, I like that word intentional more than I like authentic because authentic can feel kind of like a trap, like, oh, if I'm not airing my dirty laundry am I really being authentic and it's like you don't have to go like you don't have to share all of your deep dark secrets to be authentic you you, what you need to do is you need to sit down and decide what do I want to say like what do I want this business to be known for what do I want to be known for what do I want people to think of my business for like what what do I want to communicate to them really like and at the core of it is really like why should they choose you Like that's what, what branding is all about, like kind of formalizing and communicating why they should choose you. So I I think it's more about simplicity than adding on new things. Like go back to the basics, go back to the core. Like, what do you want this business to be? Um, And once, once you figure that out, it kind of helps steer everything else. So if, if somebody is sitting there and they're going, okay, I kind of have an idea of, you know, hopefully hopefully, if you're in business, you have an idea (laughs) of what it is, the reason you're doing it, the reason you get up every day. What are some Mm -hmm. of the steps that people can take to actually like get that across, you know, on a, on a continuous basis? So that does become their brand. Yeah. Um, so I think the first thing to do is sit down and have like a brainstorming session, right? Um, sit down with a list of questions, um, you know, why did you start this business? Why this business and not, you know, a cafe somewhere or, you know, a wedding photographer or whatever else you could be. Um, what do you want from this business? Like not just short term, but like five years, 10 years, like, where do you want it to be? Like, how do you want it to fit into your life? Who do you want to work with? Um, get as specific as you can about that. How are you different in the market? What are your values? What do you, what is the vibe you want to give off? Like all those things. And it does take a little bit of time to sit down and like, really think about that, really be intentional with that, figure out what your, your true answer to that is but write it down somewhere, have it easy to refer to because then for things like design choices or messaging choices or marketing choices or whatever, you can say, okay, does this say design concept? Does it communicate these things we said we wanted to? Does this color make me feel this way? Does this, you know, layout support these ideas that I want to convey? Does this marketing channel support the values that I have behind my business. So it kind of gives you a filter for like everything you're doing. It gives you some objective goalposts to like measure like, okay, am I, am I staying in line with what I said I wanted this business to be? And do you think it's also important to sort of look outside? Cause I find sometimes when entrepreneurs and, and I've been guilty of this myself is it makes sense to me, but I forget to think of like what the outside people are thinking and to sort of put it into a bit of context I I was out at our lake lot and a guy was move a new neighbor was moving in and he drove in in this like pink minivan with like decorating <laughs> on the side anyways it was like Teresa's, oh my gosh Teresa's cakes um I think is what it was called or whatever but it was funny because he rolled down the window and he goes, I know you can't look manly driving out like a pink minivan. <laughs> but I thought it was funny because that was his perception is that me walking down the street, I was like, you know, oh, you know, this guy's weird or whatever. Meanwhile, I'm like, that's so sweet. Cause I knew <laughs> it was probably his wife's business and he was helping out. Right? His but name's I- Teresa somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who am I to judge? <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's a good point, though, um, because you do want to take into account your audience because it is about communicating to them, right? You want them to get the idea of the brand. So there's, you know, fields of like color psychology and like color theory and all that kind of stuff. So you do want to kind of weigh it with that more than just like, you know, I like blue. Blue's my favorite color. So therefore, I'm going to use blue on branding. 
that that might work depending on what you're trying to communicate. This would just you want to check back with that. Like blue is known as like the professional color. It's for clarity. It's for like open skies and peacefulness. It's for like you know trust and all these kinds of things. So if some of those are ideas you want associated with your business, then yeah, go for blue. But if it doesn't fit with that, then you're going to need to adjust your your direction. Right. This is that, you know, I think an interesting thing, because I think a lot of times people do do that, right? Like they sort of pick a color, mm -hmm. um, just thinking it's a color. I like, um, I like this color. I like, I like it. this it color. It like it, it kind of yeah. works for me or it, it, like it has, it has a memory for me, but then not telling mm -hmm. people <laughs> what the reasoning yeah. is behind it. Cause I think a lot of people yeah. don't ask either. Like I'm always a very curious person, like when it comes to like say logos as an example of going mm -hmm. like what is the meaning behind you know the logo that you have if it's not like if it's not like like the cupcake shop it was a picture of a cupcake I got it <laughs> but in other areas I'm like oh like what's the history behind this is there like some story behind it and I find so often those stories are like so hidden but there's like such deep meaning behind it that I'm like why don't you share this this is like an incredible story of like how you came up with this logo or why you started this business and nobody knows <laughs> you know yeah no absolutely agree I there's a lot of those where like, you know, we picked this because the shapes are like, you know, represent this and the layers and the font is treatment, you know, and that, you know, that's part of what I do too. So like, obviously I know all of that. Um, but I think part of the magic of design too, is some of those choices are subconscious, like, like with color psychology or with font personalities or stuff, they don't necessarily need to be overtly stated because that's why you picked them because they communicate communicate that without words, you know, but yeah, sometimes, you know, on, you know, an about page or in social media or something, it can be fun to kind of dig into that. Um, unless of course you're one of the people who like just threw something together in Canva and there is no real. Like, I don't know. It was, it was a template and I changed the template, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. which I'm assuming your answer to that would be mm, not a good idea to do that. <laughs> Oh, no. Canva is not great for logos anyway, because you can't copyright or trademark anything you make in there, especially if you use their um, their icons or elements, because those are their stock library stuff. So there's another pro tip for you guys to, try to, <laughs> to trademark your logo right. if you made it in Canva. <laughs> so, you know, when someone is looking, okay, they, they know they want help with this or, you know, mm -hmm. um, they want to even kind of do a revamp. Cause I think sometimes people, you know, have been in business for a long time. And I know I've gone through this a few times where it's like, I need a refresh. Like I need a, like, I'm kind mm -hmm. of bored of this look or I'm, I'm adding something new or I'm, I'm changing yeah. kind of what my key thing is. Can you talk to us a little bit about when is a time to either update or change your branding? Cause I think that's a question. Sometimes people go, do I just pick it and stick with it? Yeah, well, I mean, you kind of half answered the question already, because if something is changing in your business, either you're adding a new offering or you're pivoting a different direction or you're serving a new audience or something like that, something major is changing, then yeah, you're going to want to revisit your branding. At the very least, you're going to want to check in and see like, okay, does all this still, everything I brainstormed and wrote down before, does all this still apply? And if not, then you need to update it. And that will usually lead to updating the visuals too. Um, if it's just a matter of being bored with it, um, I wouldn't necessarily throw it out the window. I would look at your, your base branding building blocks, like your color palette and your fonts and see, okay, how can I use these in new ways or new combinations or bring someone into fresh and enough? Maybe it's the imagery. Maybe you need to change up the imagery and not like your whole, you know, branding base. Um, but yeah, I think, it, I usually, the, the rule of thumb I give is like probably about every two years, check in with your brand just to see how it's feeling, how it's, if things have changed or not. Obviously, if there's a bigger trigger to like, you know, I'm completely changing the services I'm doing, then you're going to want to do it then. But if things are mostly staying the same as you go through business, just check in every about two years and see like if things have shifted, if your goals are still the same, if, you know, your audience has um, narrowed down, gotten more specific at all, that kind of thing. Um, Cause then you can kind of readjust and tweak as you need to within that context. So, and of course, 
this is what you do. So you would suggest that people this hire, do, yes. hire a professional, but what are some things that people should be either aware of or should be asking when they're looking for somebody, you know, to do this type of service, um, or get this type of help for their, for their business? Um, definitely want to make sure that they include some sort of strategy to, to the design work, not just you know, I'm going to do your brand in this style because that's what I work in, not necessarily because it's what's best for your business. Um, I would look for a range of styles in a portfolio because that shows that they can, you know, do what is best for the client and adapt as needed and not just kind of shoehorn people into one style. Um, I would also, you know, make sure they do rebrands, look at who their actual, um, you know, clientele or customers are, if they have things in their portfolio that show rebrands, great. You know, they do that. Um, or if, right. Kind know, of seeing say, those the, before I, and after photos kind yeah, of thing. Or if they say, you know, like I'm the rebrand queen, clearly <laughs> the rebrands are their jam. Um, other than that, I would say just like pay attention to how, how they work. Um, you know, are they, are they, do they have a wait list? How's their personality? Do they like Zoom calls, do they like Loom? Do they like phone calls? Do they do a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff? Or is it like you do the kickoff meeting and then you don't hear from them until they have something to show, you know, like what what is right. their working style? Because some some people like very, you know, updates every day kind of thing from their designer. And some are like fine, like, you know, you, they gave you what you need. You, they know you'll be in touch when you have something to show them kind of thing. So just kind of working style, communication style, make sure you're aligned on that. Um did that answer your question? I feel like yeah, I, I no, think I, I think it did because question, I think so. sometimes that people kind of feel like you know this is something that they want to do, but you know oftentimes it's you know they've they've gotten something else done before or they've you know they've had like a new website built as I think one mm -hmm. that I hear commonly I have a new website built the design is a little bit different it's not exactly what I wanted but like it'll do and like do you find uh, people get stuck in that it'll do for now sort of phase yeah um oof, yeah that's a good one I would say whether you're doing branding for the first time or you're rebranding, start with the building blocks of your brand. So by that, I mean your logo suite, your color palette, and your typography. Because if you can get those th three things set, then you know what to use on all your other materials. Then the website will use those. The social media posts will use those. Any print pieces will use those. Rather than jumping right to the website and then kind of coming back and go, oh, but my like color palette and logo doesn't really work with how they set that up so i am a big advocate for doing the logo foundation first um because then that kind of helps you build everything else right so making sure that you know like which direction the logo is going in and and those sort of things is that kind of what you're meaning like so that it, it fits in this other design that people are creating yeah um that or if like Ideally, you'd be having one person handle all of it, like any anything that they're going to design, like they sit down and do, you know, they help you with the logo and that stuff. And then they help you with the website design, whether they're coding it or not depends on the designer, but they can at least do, you know, a wireframe or something to hand to somebody. Um, at the very least, if you get, if you work with a logo designer and they don't do like websites at all or anything, um, but you love their logo work or they did the brand strategy or whatever, they will give you, most likely, they should at least, a brand guidelines document that kind of covers all the strategy points and covers your new brand building blocks. You know, the, the logo, the different formats and where to use them, the color palette and the different combinations, the fonts and how to use them. And even, you know, depending on how detailed the brand designer goes, it can include like imagery tips and photography style and stuff like that. You should get that. And if you do give that to anybody else you work with for design stuff or even messaging and marketing stuff, because then they can follow that and then everything will be more cohesive. So it's almost like making sure that you're getting that, that template book, that, that manual is the word I was looking for. Yes. The for, brand guide, the brand manual. Yes. Mm -hmm. So because then you for, know how to use everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it's, you have all of this information and you're like, Okay. You know, we don't want it to be like that initial business plan that a lot of people make that gets set 
put on the shelf that you're like, I just did it because I needed like a loan or something or the bank required yeah, it or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I haven't looked at it. Don't know. <laughs> yeah. So can you tell us, um, you know, like a, a story thinking back to like a, a time because these are always, you know, the juicy little gossipy bits that people like. So we'll just throw these in there. Of Sometime you were like, uh, maybe you had a client that like just didn't, wasn't understanding maybe the, the, <laughs> when they were trying to do branding without get, if you can do it without giving them away, obviously. Oh yeah. So, um, this was a potential client. They did not end up becoming a client, but you'll understand why when I tell you this story. So this is one of those Craigslist sketch stories that I was mentioning earlier. So this is when I was still a little baby independent designer. This is probably about a year or two after I started freelancing. Um, I've always liked logo design. That's always been my favorite. So that's why I specialize in branding now. But back then I was doing kind of anything under the sun. But I found on Craigslist a job posting for a logo design for a new record label, like music recording oh. record label. And I was like, oh, that sounds cool. Um, so I applied and she wanted to meet. And so she gave me the address. And um, I was still scared of the Austin highway system <laughs> at that time. So I made my boyfriend drive me to the, the appointment and we get there. And it is like the sketchiest house, <laughs> like not in good condition, trash all over the lawn, not a like a business office at all. Oh, just um, like a like, residential home. <laughs> a residential house. And I was like, okay, I'm getting a weird feeling from this already. And so he's going to stay in the car. I'm I was going to say, like, are you like, you thing. stay oh, outside. He's not leaving. He's Leave right the now. engine running. <laughs> right, yeah. So I go up to the door and knock. And I, I hear from inside, hold on, let me put a shirt on. And I'm just like, Okay. <laughs> this, all right. It's a casual meeting, apparently. <laughs> um, so she comes to the door, clothed, finally lets me in. There's like zero furniture in the place except for like a very ramshackle desk, like one of those, like, you know, somebody took an old door and like propped it up on, on some, some things. And then, then there's like a very nice computer and setup in there, but that is like it in like the entire place. And I'm just like, I'm already thinking to myself, like, how do I get out of here? But I'm like, okay, so we'll just, we'll just see. So she talks to me about her business. I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe work with her. And then we get to talking about, you know, the actual logo. And she wants a photo, photo in a logo of a toilet in her logo design. And first of all, I didn't understand the logic of that she tried to explain and I just I did not understand where the toilet fixation was coming from the second of all she didn't understand why like I tried to explain like logos have to be vector so you can like size them to any you know thing a photo doesn't really work so it'll be pixelated and it like won't won't print well like all this kind of stuff and she just would not like she wanted that photo in the logo and I tried to extricate myself and I was like I don't think I am the right fit for this and she tried to talk me out of saying no to her like it took me a couple of times like they're like no I really no I don't know I'm not gonna do this for you I finally like escaped and like we left but it's like she just like that's something I've run across a lot is like pe like business owners fixated so much on a single idea that they're just like not not going to listen to strategy, not going to listen to other ideas, just like they want that and they just want you to execute it. And it's like, I am, I have zero interest in, in that regardless of whether it's a toilet or not. I'm just like, yeah, because in my head, I'm like, like, is it crappy music? I don't understand. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Like I, it was like a prison urinal. So I don't know if it was like, I, I don't, I, Oh. I still to this day do not like understand like what well I I mean not that I'm like big that. in the music industry but I don't ever think I've seen that logo so. no um I, I just certainly did not make it for her I don't know if she went on to, to, to have it made elsewhere 
Well, and thank you so much for sharing that story. But I think what it does do is like remind people to be, you know, because a lot of times I think business owners get like that, right? We get kind of stuck in our own head and I'm guilty of this too, um, right? Because, it, you know, maybe we had a logo at one time that had, you know, that holds some sentimental value. My my logo, yeah. to use it as an example, holds sentimental value to to me, which means nothing to anybody else. Uh, but my son was the one who made it for me. So it's been like Aww. fixed over it, but he kind of created it. So I, I like, I've just kept yeah. it because I'm like, I just can't get rid of it. Right. Um, now it kind of makes sense because it's a fox with a microphone, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it sort of makes sense, but I think that sometimes, you know, this is a good message for people to remember that sometimes we do need to kind of go, okay, but again, we want other people to understand and to be able to see this and sort of get what, you know, what you're, what you're talking about, not kind of trying to figure yeah. out what do these people do? And we've all seen that in like mm -hmm. names. I'm in a rural community, so it's a smaller community. And we've had some stores that have come in where you're like, I don't understand. And I can't say the names or I'm going to give them all away, but like, it was a store that I was like, um, this isn't the do? exact like, name, but it was like universe. <laughs> I gave it away. Anyways, it's so close to that. But anyways, the store was like universe was the name of the store. And I was like, I don't understand what this store is like all about. The whole inside yeah. of the store was like all black and sort of had like, uh, like those glow in the dark kind of stars put on it. And I was like, okay, okay. It was a clothing company. And, huh. okay. but, but the clothing was all like, um, grunge kind of like skater, like, but from the outside and there was no windows from the outside, nobody knew what they did. So nobody wanted to walk in because of course the windows were you darkly tinted yeah. and people were like, the windows are tinted. Like that's only like weird shops. Like at that time it was like, uh, um, like, uh, cigar or, um, um adult, adult store, <laughs> store yeah. shops that had tinted windows we hadn't quite yeah. gotten to the you know uh <laughs> cannabis stores and stuff like that so yeah. it was but it was like sometimes you just kind of go I don't understand like you and I'm assuming that your answer is you really want your branding to be that somebody can look at it and go oh, I get what they do this makes sense to me yeah yes either in like name like if they had just said universe apparel or something, right. at least then you would have known what you're getting into. Or again, with, with actual visual branding, like maybe there's a hanger and it's worked in somehow or a t-shirt or like, you know, there's a million different ways you could do it, but you do want to give people an idea of what your business does or offers and the vibe that, that they can expect to. That's the whole point of branding is helping build that, that perception. So, yeah. <laughs> so and we've kind of already talked about this, but when, you know, I know that everybody should take a look every like few years to see if their brand mm -hmm. is on point, but is there any sort of things that could be like, um, you know, things that people could ask themselves if they're like, maybe I should may like, maybe this isn't, maybe it's my brand is what the issue is. Like, is there some key mm -hmm. indicators that may, because, you know, sometimes people go, it's the economy, it's the environment, it's that it's location or whatever. Are there some things that can make it go, mm, no, it's branding. Oh, that's a tricky one. Cause a lot of times it's wrapped up with messaging. They kind of go hand in hand. So um, if people see your business name and are still asking you, okay, but what do you do? That's right. a good indicator. Um, if you're getting a lot of inquiries from people that are not either like the not not the right fit like they don't fit your ideal client or they're asking for something that you don't even offer <laughs> right that that could be a uh, an indication too um and then even if it just if it doesn't feel right to you that's kind of a more nebulous one but if you know we don't want it to be just good enough we want it to be you want it to be something you're proud of because then if you're proud of it, you're going to use it everywhere and then you'll build consistency and consistency builds recognition and recognition builds trust and like that whole thing. Um, so you want it to be something you're actually going to use too. So if it's something you're kind of like embarrassed about your logo or something, or um, you feel like maybe your 
color palette is a little outdated or something like that, um, those could be good indications too. I'd like to rip the cover back a little bit on price. Okay. Because ah. <laughs> I think this is something that sometimes, you know, in the, in the world that we're in, where there is a lot of those like Fiverr, like all mm -hmm. of these like fly by night or like freelancers that are out there that sometimes people can be like confused or kind of have the wool pulled over their eyes a little bit in regards to what the investment, and I use the word investment intentionally because I think this is something, this isn't, you're not buying a chocolate bar to sit in the staff room. Like this is something that you're, you know, hoping to get some ROI back on. So what yes. should people kind of have the expectation of investment um, for branding? Yeah, well, it's and I know it's a big that... window, but <laughs> it is a big window and it depends. So it'll depend on, you know, the experience of the designer, you know, somebody that's just starting out, their prices are going to be different from somebody like me who has 17 years in the industry. Um, it's going to depend on the exact package you get, whether you're doing just the brand foundation, like the logo, color palette, fonts, brand guidelines, or if the designer is also helping you with like website or templates or something else. Um, for me personally, I do all of it. So my packages are all inclusive. So for, um, like a standard, like my middle of the road package, it's $10,000. That's, that's the investment. Um, but you also get like everything you need for your brand set up and training on how to use it and training on how to update your website and like all, all the help I can give you with that. Um, there are shorter things where I've seen people do like brand in a day or brand express. I offer one of those. Um, it's not quite as in-depth with the strategy and it's more like I give you the building blocks and then you go build the things more than me building them for you. And then I have like a higher tier package that is for, you know, companies where they want to bring on like a chief brand officer to like head up a rebrand or something. And that's like a month's long engagement. So it, there is a range. I would say if you're looking for a quality designer, not somebody off of Fiverr who's going to give you like clip art from Canva or something, I, I'd expect at least a couple thousand. Yeah. And if you're doing like website and print stuff or anything on top of that, it's going to go up from there. Well, and I think this, thank you for being so honest with that, because I think a lot of times people, you know, hear, hear about this, but then, you know, have this weird number in their head. Um, and nobody, and like, where did that come from? Yeah. Right. Like it's just kind of made, this is what I think uh, I would be willing to pay for this. And then not kind of going, Oh, you know, what am I really getting out of this? Um, and what do, what do I really need? Because I think sometimes people don't think about that when they're looking at pricing, right? They see the number right away. And I experienced this a lot on my own. They see the number right away and they're like, Oh my God, that's a lot. And it's like, but what do yeah. you need? Right. Because if you are okay to be self-sufficient, you know, I got a book you can buy and you can go and do it by yourself and all, all the power exactly. to you. Or if you want me to use my, like you said, my experience on not having to make the mistakes or, you know, take for years to do something that I can accomplish in months because I've already dug the holes and gotten myself out. Um, you know, what <laughs> yes. what is that worth to you kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, it is so... Like, you know, having somebody walk you through figuring out your brand strategy. I'm like, even just that side, before we get to design, I've had so many business owners tell me that part is so helpful, not just like for the design, but just in their business in general, they understand their business better. And then once you have a brand, when you have those guidelines, it saves you so much time because you're not having to like think about like, oh, what colors do I use? Or what was that font again? Or like, you know, waste time on all the things you have, all the files you need, you have the templates you need, you have like, you know how to update things. It just, whoosh, you can delegate it easily because you have this document that tells people how to use your brand. Like it saves you so much time and headache. Well, and I, I, you know, that's a great point because for the delegation piece, obviously if people are heading into this, they're serious. You know, I would say anybody who starts, you know, dealing with branding, which I think you should do from the beginning, but is really getting serious about their business. And mm -hmm. ideally you want to get to the point where you don't have to be the end all be all in your business. It's nice to have that document that you could be like, here, do this. 
um, yeah, as opposed to, to going, VA, give it to your yeah. social media manager instead you know, of whatever. going, send yeah. me everything and I'll review it and see if I like the looks of it. You could be like, follow this. Yes. <laughs> this yes, is the law. Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. So what is coming up for you? Like, do you, do you have like certain things that you're working on? Like this is, I want you to shamelessly plug yourself. What do you have going on um, <laughs> with you? Where can people find you? And then also, can you talk a little bit about the free branding worksheet that you have on your website too? Yes, uh, I will do all those things. So for me, um, I am just in a working season right now, honestly. Um, I am wrapping up one branding project this week, which has been really fun. So I am um, booking new clients for the rest of the year. I really want to do some more brand audits. Um, I'd love to do a handful of those because those are like helping people sit down and do that exploration and strategy and then giving them like, you know, a roadmap of like, here's how you can tweak things to get more on track. I love doing those. Um, so I think I want to focus on that for a little while. Um, let's see. I really like, it's funny. I really don't have anything else coming up this year. I'm trying to think like my, my girl just started kindergarten. So that kind of swallowed our, our summer and fall. So I've been like, you know, doing the mom thing for a while. Um, but yeah, um, that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, the branding worksheet is called Branding Brainstorm. And so this is basically a, a quick version of the questions that I walk my clients through to do that brand exploration to get that clarity, okay? Um, with my clients, I personalize it and add nuance and all these things. These are just like general questions that apply to anybody. Um, so it'll walk you through that. It'll help you kind of figure some things out, get it all out of your head and onto paper, which is sometimes the biggest hurdle. Um, and so, yeah, that's for download for free on my website. And as far as where you can find me, I'm mostly hanging out on LinkedIn and threads these days. So that is where I spend my time. You just look up Amanda Garacio or Studio Garacio and either one of those will work. Well, Amanda, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. I really appreciate you being so open and honest about things, but also sharing some, some great stories that I think sometimes people will be like, oh, that's really funny or go, oh, I've been there. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> so sometimes, sometimes those stories give us the gut check that we need. Um, and we'll make yeah, sure that we'll we see. have all of the links where people can find you and access you as well as um, the worksheet. It has been just a pleasure. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. This has been great. I adore guests that are willing to, you know, sort of rip the the band-aid off and be honest about what it is that you need to be prepared for, what it is that you should be thinking about investing. So I really appre appreciate Amanda doing that. But I also love all of the tips and ideas that she gave, which I hope is inspiring you to take a second um, or even half the day and sit down either by yourself or with your team and look at what it is that you have going on. What is your brand showing? What are other people seeing in it? Like she had stated, are you constantly getting people asking you for things that you don't even offer. So is there a way that you can clarify what it is that you're putting out there? These are all really important facts that you can use. So I hope this inspired you to kind of take a second look at things that you're doing. Um, or if you are like me and you were like, it's really great. And I feel like something needs to be done, but somebody else needs to do it <laughs> that now you have a person that you can go to and check it out. So Amanda is going to be sending me the information about the branding audit that she's going to do. So make sure you stay tuned. I will make sure I have all of that and the links that you can find her. And I do encourage you to head over to her website. I actually, just before we recorded this episode, I signed up for it so that you can get her free branding brainstorm worksheet. There's 20 questions that you can really take time, you know, schedule time off to actually do this because it's really going to help you to sort of clarify your business. And it's going to give you an idea because this is sort of the bite-sized version of what she does on a grander scale. So not only do you get some clarity in your business, but you can really see if it is what you want and she has what you need to offer. So no matter what it is that you're doing today, whether you're just taking a breath because your brand is on point, whether you're ready to redo it or whether you're just sitting back and coasting, it is all okay. Just make sure that you take time to have fun. Because as I always say, if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? <laughs>